Hello, my name is Ana Estrada Real and I just graduated from the Master of Science in Computer Science at Tecnológica de Monterrey in Mexico City. And I will be presenting the paper, A Data Analytics Study in the Influence of Top Universities Over World Class Cities based on QS Best Cities Ranking. And this work was developed with the collaboration of Luis Caraga Sotomayor and Professor Francisco Cantu Ortiz. So the motivation behind this study comes from the concept of international education, which was born in the 17th century referring to intercultural education for students that were the children or mainly the children of diplomats and entrepreneurs in the era of the First World War. So these students were seeking um, an understanding of their cultural and national diversity around the world. International mobility has been changing in uh, recent years and according to UNESCO Institute for Statistics has been increasing. In the year 2000 there were 2 million international students and by the year 2016 there were 4.8 million. So um, we're interested also in the economic impact of international students. Um, for example, for the UK between the years 2014 and 2015, then 19% of total students were international. 13.8 um, billion was the total economic contribution from international students. And they also um, helped to impact 206,000 full-time jobs. So, um, some characteristics of uh, each city were measured by QS and they created the best student cities ranking. And we believe that we can get an insight of the characteristics that makes a city attractive for international students. And this can be of great interest to governments or universities to understand how to improve the attraction of international students and also improve their economy, not just by getting um, more students into the country, but also if some of them stay in the country, they may be a highly qualified workforce. So the methodology that uh, QS follows to construct this ranking uh, is based on measuring six indicators. The first one is rankings, which are the ranked universities in, in the city and also the positions of these universities in the ranking. Uh, the second indicator is student mix, which is the proportion of international students as well as the social progress index. The third one is desirability, that's some safety, pollution, corruption, globalization, and economy. The fourth one is employer activity, which are um, cities with universities that produce highly sought graduates by employers. Then we also have affordability, which sums tuition fees, big Mac index, iPad index, and cost of living. And finally, student view, which is a survey taken by graduated students and considers um, diversity, friendliness, affordability, and also the idea that these students may want to stay in the city. These indicators can have a score uh, between zero and 100, 100 being the highest and summing all the uh, indicators, you can get a maximum overall score of 600 points. So we integrated um, this data set with, the, with six of the years that are currently uh, online uh, from 2014 to 2019. There is, are a total of uh, 128 cities um, ranked and um, since some countries have multiple cities in the ranking there is a total of 54 countries in the six years. We started with an exploratory analysis and we carry out a Spearman correlation which is very similar to Pearson correlation but um, the scores are ranked. This is to avoid um, the assumption of normalization um, in between the, the indicators. And so when the correlation is closer to one, there is a perfect correlation. And when it's closer to zero, there is almost no correlation. And here we can see we have a very high correlation for, um, 
four of the indicators above 0 0.7 for rankings for desirability, employer activity, and student view. A little bit lower for student mix and almost zero for affordability. And this was something that really caught our attention. We developed a couple more measurements to see why this was happening. Um, so another table that we developed in our exploratory analysis is um, cities ranked per country. And we wanted to know which were the countries with more attraction and based on the amount of cities that are ranked in, in this particular ranking. So um, we found that uh, for 2019, United Kingdom had 14 cities as well as the United States. And then we have um, Australia with seven cities ranked and Canada with five. We may think that um, these four countries have um, in common that they are uh, English speaking countries. That may be helpful for um, a lot of students to get into a new country that uh, with a language that they can learn um, or that they may also have already in their education in the elementary education and that helps them get um, more comfortable into traveling to those countries but we can also see some uh, countries that uh, are not english speakers um, with a lot of cities ranked for example france india and japan and with a lower amount of cities ranked, uh, we have China, Russia, and Germany. Um, so regarding the uh, issue of affordability not being really um, correlated to the overall score, and we think it, this is an issue because um, that means that um, the cost of living may not be important for students to when they are looking for education internationally. And the reason for that may be that a lot of the students that go internationally um, either have the means to cover the cost or um, they are very high um, level students and they can get scholarships. So um, that's why we think affordability may not be the most important characteristic of a city being um, chosen by a student. But still, we wanted to know which were the most expensive cities. So we developed this um, table measuring the average uh, tuition fees. And the cities with the highest were um, San Francisco for the United States, Bristol for the United Kingdom, Perth for Australia. And here we can see the ranking, which they are right now in the QS Best Cities ranking. We also wanted to know how um, the universities affected the city being in the ranking. So um, we um, counted how many universities that city had that were in the ranking, and uh, we sorted them from highest to lowest, having London in the top, and um, also with Seoul. The difference here in the ranking score is the position of the institutions that are ranked. Um, but we can see how London being in the top of the QS ranking is um, really important to consider um, the ranking of the university. So when we have international students, they are seeking to have a great international experience, but they are also considering the ranking of the institution that they are um, going to arrive to. So there is a great correlation in, in between the universities ranked and uh, the position of the city. Um, we also wanted to give a tool to decision makers um, to know how the city was performing in future years. So for that, we developed the model uh, called Panel Data. And this is the equation that Panel Data follows, which means that we get um, different equation for each I, which is the individual, in, the, in this case, the city and for every t, which is uh, the time. So we are going to get a different equation for each city and for each year. This is important so um, a stakeholder can know how they are developing um, in comparison to other cities and to previous years. And we are expecting a coefficient of one for the six indicators because we know they are summed. 
um, there is no uh, specific weight that they are um, multiplied by when they are added for the overall score. Um, and to validate this model, we carried out a cross-validation, which basically means that we are going to train the model with five years, leaving one out, and then we are going to predict the scores for this year and get the uh, mean error. Uh, we do this six times, so we get that mean error for each year being left out, and that will um, validate this model if we want to use it to predict future years. And this is the tool that we recommend if someone wants to know or wants to predict um, the performance of their city into the future. Um, so having all these tools being the tables um, showcasing the differences between each country, the cities that are ranked in the country, the average fees, um, and the amount of universities that are ranked in that city. And also with the panel data, we think we can conclude that um, it is important to maintain a strategy that works together with universities and, and governments to create policies that support international and local talent to remain in the city and provide highly qualified workforce. So we can see that there are some cities that are um, attracting more, more students, but we think that with this study, we can help other cities uh, improve their strategy and help attract um, students and, and also maintain um, high quality um, workforce if they man can maintain those students after they finish their, their high education. We also think that policymakers and institutions must, must work hard on providing students uh, with solutions to achieve their professional goals. With education uh, being more expensive and also cost of living, it's more difficult for um, the average student to get a quali uh, quality in their education. So we think it's important for policymakers to take into account not just the highest students that can travel with um, either money from their families or um, scholarships, but also take into account uh, the community they are based on and, and help to get a high education for most, um, most people around them. We also believe that QS with student city ranking was able to create a ranking that reflects strengths and weaknesses that each city is facing. So here we wanted to um, understand why um, the indicators were so diverse and why some had a higher correlation than others. And we think this will help a city understand why um, they are attracting more or less students. Um, maybe they will um, be able to improve whatever they are, have been missing. Um, and last, we think that stakeholders can make use of panel data to keep track of their indicators and project their current performance into future years. This, uh, with this tool, we think it's easy for, for stakeholders to get to know their evolution in time and, and to compare themselves to um, get a better education for, for most of their students. So the idea here is that the international experience is improved, not just by the university, but also um, by the governors or, or the policy, policy makers to help students get the best experience possible. So that's it for our presentation. It was supported by Tecnologico Monterrey and Conacyt. Thank you so much.